Greetings, programs. I am Young Napoleon, and I want to welcome you to the beginning of a new Victoria 2 series. This is going to be a Portugal run with no mods and all of the DLC. This was suggested to me by one of my viewers, and I got to do a little researching, and it looked pretty interesting. <clears throat> Apparently, uh, P Portugal, uh, if I understand correctly, had a bit of a colonial empire going before it was the cool thing to do. As such, they start in a really good position. Let's switch back over to the political map mode. They start in a really good position in Africa to do something kind of, that I think not a lot of the other colonial powers are in a position to do, which is to take a huge, massive swath of Africa. Uh, the gist of it is that the, the, the basic behind the, the theory, or behind the, the, the run, is that you're going to need to conquer or you're gonna to need to colonize or colonize and or conquer a lot of this area around uh, Africa, cutting off all of the other major powers from being able to colonize the interior. Uh, now, I have watched a, a guide to do this as part of my research, uh, and, I'll, and I'll include in a link. I will include a link in the doobly-doo. The video is by this YouTuber by the name of The Cool Rev. Um, he hasn't made many videos since. I think this was his last one, and it was about seven months ago, but it was a very helpful video. Uh, and so we're going to kind of go by there. I do want to avoid, like always, any sort of paint-by-numbers experience. Uh, the cool thing about Victoria 2 as opposed to Hearts of Iron 4 is that there's not a, a historical AI focus, so things can go go left. So that we definitely, and there are definite points in this strategy where things can go left and ruin your whole day. So we will keep an eye out for that, and hopefully this will be... An interesting series to watch. Now there are three things that we have to we have to go for in order to to accomplish this feat. The first is of course money. So we're going to start out by mastering our economy simulator here. We're going to go we're going to go into debt real fast, and that's fine. Excuse me. Uh, that's fine. The uh, what we're going to watch out for is when the income, or rather the interest, get goes over the the income. That's when uh, we have to. That's when the game declares bankruptcy for us and things start to go really poorly. Uh, we're going to try and not. Ex we're going to try and expend as little resources as possible. To keep our losses down to as as few as possible. Initially, in my first practice run, I started off by uh, because the second thing we're going to need is a lot of colonial power, and so I started off by trying to build a naval base over in uh, I think yeah this is this is like I said um, Portugal's got a lot of far off colonial places. We've got something here in in Asia or far east Asia I should say, and then over on. I don't know, is India considered Middle Eastern Asian, or I'm not sure. Uh, at any rate, we've got some more Asian holdings over here in Portuguese Bombay. So yeah, I started off trying to build a naval base. Naval base gets you a lot of colonial power, uh, but that ate into our budget quite a bit. And uh, we, we started taking out loans a lot sooner than I was hoping for. The, so the idea now is to wait until things start to get back into the green before starting on those bases. I did, in my second, my first practice run lasted all of like 10 minutes. Uh, the second second practice run went a lot better, and I, I started by uh, hopping over here and taking Johore. I know I'm not going to pronounce that right. I know I'm not pronouncing it right. Um, for the, the, the gold mines, there are a lot of precious metal... Well, not not right now, but soon a lot of these, I think it's these three territories all turn into precious metal. Uh, and But I looked at my budget and I didn't seem to be getting a lot of a lot of money from that. The, the population isn't all that high. And I don't think I'm going to have the technology, speaking of technology, let's go ahead and get started on the stock exchange because we need that. There are a few technologies that we're going to need in order to pull this off that we're going to have to kind of beeline for, but I still need I still need money. 
money is what makes this world go round. So we're going to start off with the tax efficiency here. Uh, yeah, there wasn't a big enough population over here to really get a whole lot. You can see uh, the numbers were bigger, of course. <clears throat> I was a few, I was about 10 or 20 years into the game, and I was getting much more money out of just my taxes than I was out of the, the gold from the gold mines. So, but I don't know. I was I was also much quicker into the green that time. There might be other calculations like in the exports and the trade that I'm not aware of. I don't see where I don't see where like what you're exporting gets factored in. Does that do I only make money from taxing and and tariffs? I wonder is could I be because that was if that was the source of all of my money, that was hugely helpful. But I guess we'll see. So we're going to start off this time by making a beeline for Lindy. We're going to go ahead and justify a war here. 139 days. Five infamy if we're caught. That's fine. And we're justifying a war on Oman. We're going to grab Lindy as the first spot in the strategy. We don't need a huge army to do this. What we've got down here in Africa already should be sufficient. Uh, and then we're not going to... Man, Africa is massive. We're not going to do... Send these guys down here. Uh, we're not going to do anything with these guys just yet. Actually, I take that back. I think we are going to send them down down into Africa to get them set up for the second war. Uh, okay, let's see. We've got our tech set up. So yeah, the three things we're going to need. We're going to need a lot of colonial power, and to get that, we need naval bases and ships. The best, so sh the best ships for the job are the monitors and the ironclads. Specifically, I think the ironclads are better, so we're going to have to beeline for those techs. And then there are a few techs that lower the minimum life rating. You'll see here on the expedition, or not lower, the it raises our life rating. Or, I don't know which way it works, <clears throat> but you get these technologies and then you can colonize the, the regions. I'll speak to that a little bit better when it gets closer. But so we're going to need the colonial power, we're going to need the techs, and we're going to need the money. Now for the techs, uh, I'm going to start off by getting some, setting some national foci to get my clergy up, because we can see that our literacy rate is appalling. I did a test run as Japan just to see what that's like too, and that's fun. I think I may do that after I do, the, do this Portugal run. Uh, but their literacy rate started out at like 40%. They were even better than the Texas run that I did. Oh, and speaking of the Texas run, I like how we start <laughs> at practically the spot where we ended the Texas run at. So that's kind of amusing to me. Anyways, back to the, the national foci. We're going to start off with Doro. You see their clergyman is at 0.8. Doro? I know, and I apologize. I know I've got at least one Portuguese listener or Portuguese viewer uh, in my audience, uh, and I apologize especially to you for the way I'm about to butcher all of these names. Uh, but this region has a clergyman percentage of 0.8, so we're definitely going to work on that. And then Estremadura has, let's see, that's my next most populous. Yeah, they've got, they're a little better at 1.1. We're going to encourage them to. And I think uh, politics, uh, I do, I'm a, I was really excited to learn watching the, uh, the guide that I can appoint a ruling party. Now, it will get changed on me every time the elections run, run, run around, but uh, I, can, I can change this at will. Why can I not? Oh, they're already the ruling party. Uh, I, I can change these whenever I want to. Now, I don't know if it has any sort of effect on consciousness or militantism, so I don't want to do it a whole lot. But uh, right here in the Monarchikikos, again, just 
every time I say a word, you can assume I'm apologizing for butchering it. Uh, the economic policy is state capitalism. Now, it's not the planned economy like I like. This still allows um, capitalists to, to try and build stuff, but at least I can, can build what I want to build. And the first thing we're going to do once we get some uh, some craftsmen, which we have zero right now, uh, once we get some of those built up, we're going to go for a steel factory down here in Alentejo. Alentejo. I don't know. I, the closest thing I can come to Spanish is the Mexican Spanish, and I realized that like Mexican Spanish is different from Spanish Spanish, which is even different from Portuguese. So I'm going to be way off. <clears throat> but by now I'm beating a dead horse, so you get the picture. Uh, let's see. So we got the budget set as well as we can right now. We got our tech set. We got our national focus set. We don't need to change the, the ruling party just yet because we don't need to, to change our... We don't need to build any factories yet, so we're going to go ahead and unpause. Oh yeah, I did want to... Once these guys get... They are located, okay. Uh, I don't want to send the cavalry down. Maybe I do. No, the cavalry's... What's the difference? The attack is... They're six and five. They are infantry is five and five. Okay, so yeah, we're going to have them board the ship. Or can we not create? Maybe because that. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is take the clippers out. I don't want to click because like once I get far enough away from port, these guys will start taking uh, org damage or strength damage. One of the two. Uh, this little orange number. <laughs> and uh, strength damage. Okay. And it's hard to, to resupply them right now. I just don't have the money to be buying the supplies to, to refit them. So I, wanted, I want to use them as little as possible. I think that'll cut down on my uh can care okay so we're gonna send them that'll cut down on my losses we're gonna send them down to here where we're gonna unload and then send the troops over to this region Kaimete in order to because our second target is going to be Transvaal we're going to start closing off the, the uh, everywhere that we can, because you see the British have a spot, and the British have a nice little fat colony down here that we're going to cut out. So, now we can unpause. And we might as well just hang out over here, wait for the ship to get here. I am going to speed things up a little bit, because there's a lot, of, a lot of waiting in this early game. Yeah, you can see the budget just going bananas. There's a lot of waiting in this early, early part of the run. So we're staring at a map. Apparently the troops are moving into position. That's good. And we haven't been caught yet. This is, I think I probably shouldn't have said that. See, as soon as I say it, there, um, I get caught. I jinxed us. Pause it for a second. Okay. We're going to send you guys down here. And we're going to send you... So they're still at 100%. They haven't left the range of my ports yet, and I think I still have stuff in... I probably still have material in my stockpiles. I don't know if I start the game with anything. But we're going to send you back here. How much longer do I have on this justification? Not long. Two, one, three. Okay. We're going to demand Omani Lindy. Let's see. We won't get much in the way of prestige for this, but that's fine. Let's see. Oops, I almost clicked on 
I think at some point, uh, the game starts not long after I think Brazil has won its independence from Portugal. So once I get Africa taken care of, I might set my eyes on Brazil. I don't know. We'll see. I'll have a, a pretty sizable army from this. So we might try and reclaim some of our South American holdings. We'll see what happens. Uh, but we've got, we're in position here, and I'm not even going to worry with setting the, the military, the infantry, the army budget back up to max, because the last time I did this, both times I did this, the Omani did not put up any sort of resistance. Now, I don't know how much quicker it is to have two versus one in the occupation thing. We're going to go ahead and split them off just so that we can see if this goes any quicker. Because the sooner I, I get the territories that I need, the uh, sooner I get the war goal, the sooner I can declare peace. Uh, because uh, the after Transvaal, I'm going to want to come back and hit Omani again and apparently conquer them. That seems to be the cheaper way to go. They've got a couple more regions, two or three here. The region map mode, I think it's the T. So yeah, they've got Zanzibar, Kenya, and Somaliland. So there's three. So yeah, I can see where that would take longer, I think, than to just outright conquer them. We're doing okay. I'm gonna go ahead and lower the speed just a little bit while I do some hopping around. Be good. I'm gonna put you back on the ship. Select you guys again. And send you back down to Mbanza. So far, so good. It was kind of nice in the, the second run that I, that I ran through, the second uh, second test run for, for this Portugal run. The uh, I didn't get the, the Johore conquest. The, the justification didn't get noticed until I was almost done with it, so I got like one point of infamy uh, in what, what, what could have been, I think, 11 or 22. It was one of those rare occurrences I wish I could have saved for the for this run, but oh well, c'est la vie, as they say. First fleet is still moving in transit. No, we are on pause, right? Yeah, okay, we're gonna speed things back up again. Military leader has died, that's unfortunate. Upper house. Still the Sifimbrismo? Okay. Oh, okay. I got a, one thing I did fail to do in my previous two runs to keep a close eye on the national focus. Uh, because once they're done. Whoa! How did you get all the way up here? See what I mean? <laughs> Things can just go all sorts of. All right, let's hop you back on board. Can just go all sorts of sideways if you're not paying attention. That is unfortunate. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. So, national focus. We've got, we just finished in Estremadura. Yeah. Okay. So, the next most populous region looks like it's going to be Portuguese Lorenco. So, we got 1.1. Clergyman, take you out of Estremadura and unpause. Hopefully, my first army can get back before before they siege that down, and I'll be able to tell when they're done over here. Oh goodness. I won. Okay. Wow, this is definitely going a lot. All pops in Portuguese lose consciousness or they lose militancy. 
in Portugal. Uh, let's see, what's their militancy look like right now? I don't think anybody is terribly... Oh, hey, I don't have to scroll through all that. I can do this. Yeah, we've got a little bit in Africa Minor. I don't think that's... Let's, let's, let's do that. Uh, yeah, you can tell I'm still sieging those down because they're in red. Once I get those, they'll transition back. That was just <laughs> weird. Okay, so see what I mean? Even though I'm painting by numbers, it's not paint by numbers. We're going to go ahead and, uh, yeah, we're going to call it here for today. We've already gone about a minute or so over. So if you've enjoyed this so far, please be sure to do all that YouTube stuff. As always, I would take it as a kindness. And always remember, sometimes you win and sometimes you learn. Already, we're learning that the Omani can warp around Europe somehow. <laughs> uh, yeah, see you next time.